Greetings. This is Lisa Gubari. It's so good to be here. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today's segment is about therapy, yourself, and the power to tap within yourself to heal. And who does that? And what it is all about hypnotherapy and how can you tap within yourself to tap within your wisdom to heal? Well, it's about accepting our flaws, loving who we are, validating who we are, and through that, knowing that we have either a habit or a behavior or something about our life that we want to modify, edit, or change. So many people ask me, what is hypnotherapy? Well, I believe hypnotherapy to be a tool. It is a tool that uh, the therapist, like myself, helps you to delve within yourself through process going from your conscious level into your subconscious level. So how does this happen? Let me give you an example. Our mind is in two parts, actually is in three parts. But today we're going to talk about the conscious level and our subconscious level. Consciously, we look, listen, and learn, just like a video camera. And subconsciously, we record, store the information. Our bodily function is taken care of without us thinking about it. And the third thing that our subconscious mind does for us is recall. Today, I was talking to someone. And by giving an example, I went all the way back to another time and a place, which was me being a young girl and being in uh, where I grew up, my home that I was born and grew up in Iran. And as if walking down the entire backyard around the swimming pool and then remembering the mulberry trees and remembering that I used to climb up the trees and in summertime with my father and grandfather, we would just go up there and my mom and grandma would hold the sheets and we would shake the trees and the mulberries would fall onto the sheets and that's how they gathered. And I also remember being up there as a young kid and picking the mulberries and eating it while I was shaking it. You see, what happened at that very moment is that from the moment that I am right here, right now, I reverted back and recalled, just like a video camera, the way we do a rewind. I went and did the rewind all the way back to my childhood time, even walking, uh, I mean, climbing the trees and being with my father and my grandfather, both of them, God bless their soul, who are not here present, but it was so real to me. I, can, I couldn't even hear their sounds and the giggling and even my mom scolding me, eating the mulberries. And that, isn't that amazing? That in an instant, we can go from here to there and back. And that is what we do. Consciously, we look and listen and learn. Just as you are watching me at this very moment, either on your computer or on your cell phone, iPhone, whatever it is that, or iPad, it doesn't matter. By watching me talk about this, perhaps you can even think about your childhood and either, either with a tree or another scenario that was a happy moment in your childhood that you had completely forgotten, that it's part of nature 
and you could hear the sounds, you could be present, you could embrace that feeling of joy while you're sitting right here, right now. So a part of our conscious, as it looks, as it takes in the information, which is storing it, so as it looks, it learns, which is capturing, and it listens. As you are listening to everything that I say, or perhaps even hearing the sounds from a long time ago. And then what does the conscious do? We take it all in, all the thoughts that come in, and then it gets down into being placed into this beautiful part called the subconscious level, which stores all the information, every, every single thought, idea, concept, image, sound, touch, feel, every experience that you have ever experienced. You, not the outside world, whatever you have felt is stored in there. Now, by storing in there, the subconscious mind can also do the replay, right? So when we want to go to our first grade, when we want to remember our sweet 16th birthday, perhaps the day we graduated, the day that we had a prom, who was my date, what did I wear? You can go on and on the day that you graduated university and who was your favorite instructor, teacher, and why? The classroom, every aspect of that. So from your first job to this very moment, from your first car to this very moment, but then there is another thing that subconsciously we do and that your subconscious mind regulates your entire bodily function that you don't even give a second thought until something goes wrong and still until something is off there is pain and it just it's as if telling you pay attention to me something is not right and that's when we think about it. So, why did I bring all this? Why am I talking about our conscious level, our subconscious level? Why am I talking about our experiences? And why am I talking about the either, I mean, therapy in itself? Because there is no single person no hypnotherapist, no therapist, no coach, no mentor that can truly help you make a shift or make a change until the day that you have not chosen to, until you are not ready. I had someone call me and say, can I bring my brother in so you can hypnotize him for him to go to therapy. Really? Think of it. If he is not willing to do any therapy, if he is not open to do any hypnotherapy or any therapy or any coaching or any shift in his life, no hypnosis will stick. And I'm saying this genuinely because if in our heart we are not ready for the change, it's not going to happen. We can force it the same way as people who want to lose the weight and they go and they do in the past, years and years ago, they did the fentanyl, which was literally a drug right? And it was an upper. So fenfen in itself is, was an upper and they would do this upper and upper and upper. And while they're on this vibration of this upper level, the moment they started coming down, they have to go up again. And by doing this, they were on such high vibration that they didn't feel like eating. 
So they lost the weight. But at the same time, those uppers were damaging another part of our body, of the body. Now, when something stimulates you and you're constantly on this level, it falling and coming down, it's going to be much harder. Why am I saying this? Because the person who wants to drop weight, they can go and do the fen fens, they can do all kinds of crash diets, they can go and do lap band, they can do all that, and it's wonderful. Each to his own or her own. But the difference is that if your eyes and your subconscious mind do not truly believe that, yes, I am becoming thin. Yes, I love being thin. Yes, I enjoy my body in this way. No matter what you do, underneath, it's going to start wanting to fill that hole. The whole of that emptiness, the whole of that empty feeling. You see, it's about a feeling. You can do a lot of things to the body, but if the feeling, the conscious and the subconscious are not aligned, subconscious mind is going to say, but I'm still hungry. And then they go and eat and eat because they have to fill this void this hole, that no matter how big this opening is and you make it smaller or tie it up and have this shut out, there's still that hole in there, the hole of wanting something more, the hole of feeling a void, the hole of saying I'm not good enough. And no matter what weight, until we come to say, what do I want in my life? So when we think about the mulberry tree and me being on that mulberry tree and feeling the joy of it, at that very moment, I didn't think how old I am. I didn't think, how did I climb up there? Because I was up there already. I don't think what happens if I fall because that was not the point. See, all that analyzing, uh, criticizing, and judging, and comparing myself to you or to the other person, that person has more education, that person is richer than me, that person is thinner than me, and that person is more beautiful than me. Every time we compare ourselves, either physically, emotionally, mentally, in material ways or inner ways, we are saying, I'm still lacking something. That hole is not closing. That hole is called validation, self-validation. That hole is called self-love. A lot of people do not like the word love. Ugh. It's such a big thing. How can I love myself? It's not about being selfish. It's not. But it's self-respect, self-validation, self-worth. And if you have an issue with love, then I would really want you to sit with yourself and say, when did I stop loving me? Why am I so uncomfortable with the word love? And yet I want to be loved. Hmm? No one can love us. We feel loved by them. Because no matter what happens from the outside, there is no way that they can do enough, say enough, uh, bring enough, touch enough that you feel worthy to be loved until the time that you say, I'm as good as anyone else. Why not me? I want to be loved. I am open to be loved. 
I am open to love myself and my body. And I like my body right here, right now. And why not climb the tree? And if I can't climb a tree, I will sit and remember climbing that tree, remember the joy within me. When I was up on the tree, I will remember eating the mulberries. I will remember my own giggling. I will remember the family, my grandparents. I will remember where I come from. Because no matter how negative or how loving our life has been, there's always the yin and yang. You know that yin and yang, the black and white? Because even the rich have hard times and the poor has good times. It doesn't matter. It's like a friend of mine, when they were talking about a dog and they said, oh, Lisa, I'm sure, I mean, Bodhi is so zen and he stays in your office all the time, which he is right here, right now. And he's so quiet, but owning a dog, it's a responsibility. Of course it is. Everything in our life is a responsibility. But I also know how we can take care of either a dog or a child or another person, how we love them, how we love them, how we cherish them. There's also another thing that I know, that there is rural cities and communities that you can go to, even a farmland or even the poor cities, that there is an owner and a dog. And they are not groomed every week. They are not being pampered every week. They are not in a doggy hotel or having special doggy cookies made for them every week or every day. And it comes from love. The dog follows the owner. And the owner tends to the dog, pets the dog. And we forget to do the same thing to ourselves and we create so many blocks and restrictions of how we are supposed to appreciate who we are, not what we are, not what we own. And believe me, we all want to strive for something better. And why not? Why not strive for something bigger, better, healthier, stronger, prosperous, uh, richer, more educated, thinner, beautiful, as long as we come to say, this is where I am and I love it. That's where I'm going to be and I love that. This is where I come from and I love that too. experiences is something that we've already gone through them it's already through them today we are here today consciously and subconsciously allow yourself to become this mulberry tree that the tree in itself the mulberries that grow on the tree is because of where the tree has been placed and the soil is good, the temperature of the weather is good, and someone placed it in there, maybe just a seed, and they hope that the tree will grow. And the tree did. And this tree created branches underneath and started crawling under that soil. And it doesn't think, is my branch going crooked or is my branch going to the right place? It's just, I'm branching out. I'm creating these branches so my bark is strong. And I don't think about how many edges are on my bark and who's going to carp on my bark and who's going to climb on me. I am full of mulberries in this season because when this season is over, I'm going to hibernation until it's time for my tree, my branches to give leaves, and then my fruits will come. And someone 
will come and pick my fruit. Trees are like the mother tree. It's so powerful. It's so strong. Every time we carve on a tree and we put our initials on a tree, we are saying, Mother Tree, remember me. I was here. And most of us that carve on a tree, we usually want to carve it because with an initial, either our initial or saying, I've been present, I was here, or we put a heart and we put the initials, our initial and the one that we love. A mother tree holds that energy and will always remember. And if you have a tree, a fruit tree, the next time you go and look at a fruit tree or even a tree with flowers, look at the beauty and appreciate it. Appreciate yourself, appreciating that tree that gives flowers and gives fruit for you to pick or just enjoy. With that, embrace who you are, appreciate who you are. And as we evoke what was all our experiences, we must embrace all our experiences that has created this path for us to journey to be where we are today. And where do you want to be tomorrow? What trees will you plant? What fruits will you pick? What about your body are you now ready to thank even yourself and overcome the blocks, the hurt, the pain, or even all the jealousy and envy and let it go and say, what do I want to create in my life? What is my dream? Who do I want to evolve to so that I can love and appreciate and accept myself far more deeply than today. You are the most genuine, loving, earthly person right here, right now. And you matter to me. And I know you matter to so many others that you have not thought of. And it can be a tree, a pet, a child, your parents, your friends, your colleagues. As you breathe in, say thank you to each and every breath that you breathe in. Say thank you to your conscious that can hear, that can listen, that it can embed. Say thank you to your subconscious mind that stores everything, regulates your bodily function and it recalls all the good and perhaps not so good. And appreciate and love that too. And then when you show up and stand up for yourself and you say, my golly, I'm not as bad as I thought. What do I want to do today? What a difference can I make in my life and someone else's, perhaps? Choose. 
to dream bigger. Choose to become healthier. Choose to become the prosperous person that you deserve to be. My name is Lisa Bubari. And if I can be of help, I am here for you. Okay. Hello to all who have joined in. Hello, Annette. Hi, Maggie. Vicky. Hello, my love. Hi, Andy. How are you, sweetie? Mariette. Robert. Is there any question I can give? Hello, Sylvia. I'm fascinated by the interplay of the conscious and subconscious mind. Oh. You know, one of the things is hypnosis is such a natural state. So many people have uh, a negative connotation about hypnosis and they think it's all that woo-woo, you know, you're going to drop into that state of hypnosis and you're not going to come into awakeness or you're going to give all this uh, secret away. Uh, none of that. Our subconscious is more powerful because it does not negate or respond to anything. It, it does not, uh, our subconscious mind, let's put it this way in a more positive aspect of it, it does everything we say it consciously, but it has to believe and be in sync with our conscious. So if I were to say, I am a millionaire, today and I'm going to go and buy a million dollar home today our subconscious mind is going to go doo -doo 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 -doo. ooh not true not true but if I were to d delve deeper inside and say I deserve to be a millionaire I deserve to have a million dollar home then the subconscious mind can say Yes, I do deserve that. And once I say I deserve it and the subconscious mind becomes in sync with it, then it's the beginning of creating what it is that I want to go and become or create or manifest into my life. So affirmations are absolutely wonderful as long as the affirmations that we say we come to believe and we bring ourselves into the future to embed into it, feel it, live it, become reality, and that reality will manifest into the reality today. And we can also do the same thing in the gate and say, it cannot happen. And once we negate it, then that becomes the reality and our subconscious will do everything to create that as the new reality. I hope that makes sense. Any other questions? Let's see, is there any other question here? Hello, Jax. Uh, Annette, how are you? Hi, Ruby. So thank you, all of you. Is there any question I can answer at this very moment? Dr. Ani Kalajian. Oh my God, Dr. Ani, I was talking about you yesterday. I was talking to Garbies about you and I was going to email you today. This is absolutely amazing. Talk about manifesting. You know, when we come to that level and the you know, I like to call it vibration or whatever. But when we set ourselves to that level and we vibrate and we create it, like the same way as I call my angels, my parking angels, before I even drive into the street, I say, angels, find me a parking space. I come in and someone is pulling out. So it's manifesting from the heart, from the mind and being in sync with it 
that creates the most incredible things in our life. So Dr. Ani, I am going to be emailing you, contacting you in a few hours. Um, if there is any other question, I am open to respond uh, because I think my world of hypnosis, my world of manifesting is the most fascinating thing that there is. There is. Uh, we can accomplish so much when we believe from here. And we talk from our heart and we love from here and we come to know that just being present here in this world, there is a good reason for it. And every experience that we have come through, we are love. So thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa and enjoy the fruits of your tree until next week. Goodbye and thank you.